What's going on guys? Welcome back to a brand new video. Today we're going to have another nap tactic that scored over 200 goals in one season, won four trophies in the same season and absolutely took over everywhere we went. Let's get into it. So what's going on guys? It's Josh from Scout and today we are going to have a 4-4-2. It's a very attacking 4-4-2 so don't be put off by that negative formation because this one scores goals for absolute fun. We're going to test with four very different teams today. Let's start from strongest to weakest. So the big team in the video is going to be Paris Saint-Germain obviously over in the French League but we enjoyed a fantastic season winning 32 games, drawing one and only losing one against Monaco in a home defeat which is a little bit annoying because obviously we could have had that perfect invincible season. Unfortunately we didn't. What is not unfortunate is the Champions League. Win that five 5-2 over RB Leipzig, a little bit bitter for me because I do love RB Leipzig as a team. The French Cup, we are also going to win and that is going to be a 2-0 win against RC Lens. Quite a comfortable final in my opinion. And of course, the Trophy de Champion in a 6-1 win over Toulouse. So that is going to be your quadruple winning season, a fantastic season, one we cannot have any faults with at all. Going obviously over to that league table again, you can see how dominant we were. Mbappe scored 48, Colo Mali scored 28, Mbappe in first, Hakimi in second and Mendes in third for for the highest average rating and Hakimi, Marco and Mendes pick it up 18, 17 and 16 assists while Donnarumma maintains the most clean sheets and I will say as an entire squad across all competitions we scored 203 goals which is absolutely remarkable stuff team stat wise we're going to be looking at 2.85 points a game over 154 goals which is nearly 100 more than second place I know absolutely mental most shots for the fewest shots against possession wise isn't the most possession based tactic you're going to see when I obviously show case the tactic is quite direct quite with its approach high scoring goals you're not always going to have loads and loads of possession but you're going to win most of your games so you know you can't really complain most dribbles being made and obviously the most clean sheets as well well it is going to be just one more conceded which unfortunately does not mean we are conceding the fewest amount of goals out of every team in the french league but we're scoring so many it doesn't really matter data hub wise it's going to be 4.5 goals a game 0.62 conceded it's just shy of 25 shots a game an 84 percent pass completion and attack win ratio coming in of 78.3 of course we're going to watch the champions league final against rb leipzig and to be fair to them they didn't just completely take the defeat. I mean, we got off to a flying start. Great link-up play there. Colo Mani actually bagged a hat-trick in his Champions League final. A very, very good game from him. Hernandez now on the ball. He's going to play it through into Mbappe again by himself. And the Leipzig defence simply cannot deal with how good this tactic is. We are absolutely having our way with them in this first half as we are going to take the lead by three goals here. Mbappe squares it into Colo Mani. Leipzig semi-do bounce back at some point of the game, as you can see here. A ball in from Javer, and it's actually quite a good header there from Paulson. Obviously, their target man. They didn't get a penalty and things were looking a little bit ropey for a split second. But as we do, we get back into the game, carry on the dominance. Dembele out on the right-hand side, absolutely burning everyone. Squares it into Colo Mani to make it 4-2 at the time. One more goal to come now. Donnarumma goes long into Colo Mani, who flicks it on to Mbappe. A bit of direct 4-4-2 action. We'll take it. Up next is going to be Tottenham Hotspur. Obviously in that top sort of six mix, I want to say in the Premier League, definitely not favourites to win it. We have come out and put on a very good display. Obviously very close in the Premier League. Liverpool in second, Arsenal and Man City make up the remainder of the Champions League placements. We also are going to win the Carabao Cup 3-2 over Aston Villa. So again, everything quite close as to be expected considering we're not the best team in the game, but still getting the job done and putting on a very good set of stats as well. Heung-Min Son, highest goal scorer in the league. Kulaveski in third place. Also Kulaveski and Son in second and third with the highest average rating. Kulaveski and Yudogi pick up first and second with the most assists. Unfortunately, not the most clean sheets. Allison and Edison do top of Vicario just by about two and three goals. Going over to the stats, so we are going to feature in the most points, the most goals, outscoring Liverpool, Arsenal, Manchester United, Man City, Chelsea, some real big teams there. Most shots for, most dribbles made, conceded we're going to be in second place and clean sheets, we are going to be tied with Liverpool, obviously right there. But going over to that date hub, of course, that is going to say what the truth is. 3.47 goals per game, 0.82 conceded, so a little bit more conceded than obviously with a PSG. But to be honest, we're scoring so many more, so what we are going to be conceding, it really doesn't matter. Just shy of 21 shots a game as well, a great pass completion and a fantastic tackle win ratio. And to show you how good this tactic is against some of the best teams of the game, this is against a full strength Man City team. We are at home to be granted, but I will say a 5-1 win against Man City is amazing regardless of whether you're home or away. It's a great performance. Gil plays it into Kulaveski, over the top, into Hyungmin Son. So much space in the box, a great ball and a great finish into the bottom right corner. Pedro Porro, a ball back stick into Romero, 3-0 up against City in 32 minutes is absolutely remarkable. And one more goal to come before half time to make it 4-0. Porro into Madison, into Benton 
Atacure into the box, into Kulaveski to make it 4-0. And we actually do make it 5-0. So that is going to be five goals of no answer for Manchester City. Get a little bit lucky with that one, I will say. And they do get a consolation goal. But the fact we find ourselves 5-0 up against the best team in the game is absolutely remarkable. Their goal doesn't even mean anything. Next is going to be a team in Alte, obviously over in the Turkish second division. And they are predicted to finish in 17th place. So we did not win the league with this team. But what we did do is get promotion to the Turkish First League. So we massively over-accomplished. Now, obviously, I'm not going to hide it. Of course, we did lose games. We drew games as well. But this is a pretty much a rock-bottom team. One-off being the worst team in this league. So still a very good performance. And as you can see, our strengths were the goals. 28 goals ranking joint, actually. Two plays with 28. The second, when it comes to the highest average rating, great when it comes to the assist. But defensively, I don't think we were as good. So I will say, if you are playing as a weaker team, be prepared to concede goals. But be prepared to outscore everyone. Because as you can see right now, we're going to come in with the most goals and the most shots. They are going to be the only two stats we're going to bring home defensively we're probably not even going to be on there we weren't the best when it comes to defense obviously clean sheets in fifth place so you can see where the weaknesses are you can see where the strengths are but overall you can play like that in football manager and it works really well just play attacking outscore everyone and as we can see right here that's exactly what we've done so 1.55 conceded but nearly scoring 2.8 goals a game so that's why we're going to win so many of these games and get into a great playoff position where obviously we went on and won the finals to get promoted a 73 bang on tackle win ratio over 15 shots a game and a pass completion of 83.25 so play our final time the first time i have played in the second division of turkey to be honest with you and we got off to quite a good start to be fair making up one nil right there nothing to be um, complained about sorry should i say they do go but they bounce back they bounce back quite quickly i will be honest it's going to be suffer down the right hand side plays it across into gishic who to be honest scores a very interesting goal past Evereen, but we bounce back with arda a ball in near post and it is going to be murat picking it up and getting the goal and another set piece to actually tie it off the same sister and the same goal scorer. And lastly, 20th place predicted Cheltenham in Skybet League One. And we put on an, a, a remarkable season, to be honest with you. We only lost seven games out of 46, which might sound a fair few losses, but it really isn't out of 46 games, considering we were literally predicted to finish where Exeter did finish in 20th place. A fantastic season. The rest of the Cups are not really going to talk about as we didn't do that well in them, but we were never going to obviously beat a Villa, beat an Everton. Very unrealistic for that to happen. However, when it comes to this Skybet League One, we did did take over. Keener comes in with 37 goals, Lloyd with 24. Keener also picking up the highest average rating. Ferry and Harrop picking up 19 and 15 assists. Second place in the most clean sheets and I'm very interested to see. Yeah, we are going to feature on the lot. So when it comes to the fewest conceded, second place, most clean sheets, second place. But where we really come into our own is the fewest shots against, the most shots for, the most goals. I mean, Oxford United and Peterborough putting up a lot of goals, but we're still very clear of them. Obviously, 21 more goals in second place and the most points per game of course we are going to obviously win because we did win the league so that's quite obvious there the data hub is going to be 2.7 goals a game just over one goal conceded a game but when you're you know we literally basically score on 1.7 to what we are going to be conceding you're never really going to have too many issues as we didn't a 78 percent tackle win ratio and 84 percent pass completion and just over 18 shots a game there's nothing really we can complain about i mean yes you are going to concede the odd goal here and there as the weaker teams but you're going to outscore every single time and there wasn't really many incredible games of the season. We had a few 3 nils, 4 nils. This was one of them against Peterborough. A very sort of lucky goal there for Keener, who just seems to be in the right place at the right time. Into the 73rd minute now, it's going to be Bonds flicking it on into Lloyd. He's going to take a touch, and that is a very good finish, to be fair. And if I remember right... Because I did play a fair few games. I think there was an own goal in the end. It went down as Bradbury into Bonds. He's going to take it down the left-hand side, back into the middle. And yeah, an own goal. I remember well. But of course, I'll to your favourite part of the video. That is going to be the tactic breakdown. If you are enjoying so far, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the FM Scout channel. And if you enjoy the videos I provide on here, you can check out my stuff in the description. We put up tactics. We put up rebuilds on my channel as well. So come over. Be sure to say you're from the FM Scout channel. And hopefully you enjoy your stay there. But let's go over the player role. So it is going to be a sweeper keeper coming in simply on the supportive instruction. A wing back on the right, on attack, on cross more often, sit narrower, tackle harder, and also mark tighter. And that is going to be exactly the same for the left back as well. So, so far, a very mirrored wing back sort of scenario. A ball playing defender comes in on the left, on defend, on dribble more, tackle harder, and mark tighter. And that's going to be exactly the same for the right hand side. In terms of the inverted wingers, it is going to be on the right, on attack, on tackle harder. And it's going to be on the left with an additional instruction of tackle harder and also sit narrower. A very good partnership here, my favourite in the game. A mix 
mixture of a deep line playmaker on support on tackle harder and mark tighter and a box to box on support on get further forwards move into channels tackle harder and also mark tighter and to finish it off two advanced forwards on the right on attack on tackle harder and on the left on attack of course also on tackle harder let's get into the team instructions and it is going to be based off the custom tiki tacker on the attacking mentality in possession we are going to go with fairly narrow underlap left underlap right while focusing down the left and the right hand side this combo works really really well standard and slightly higher so you'll be pleased to know it's not going to be too strenuous on your players either run at defense and also low crosses in transition it's going to be counter press counter distribute quickly while rolling the ball out to anyone here so it can go to the fullbacks the center backs and of course the playmaker and out of possession is going to be the much higher defensive line the high press line of engagement much more often and prevent short goalkeeper distribution so also no get stuck in so it is going to be quite a composed 442 that does score a lot of goals and it's a lot of fun to play with if you have enjoyed be sure to leave a like check out the other content on the channel and keep the comments coming and i'll see you in the next video